Hey guys, welcome to the next video on data structures and algorithms. In this video, we are going to talk about complexity analysis. So why do we use complexity analysis? So we all know that in software engineering, we can write different algorithms to solve the same problem. So how we can select the best algorithm to solve a problem? There can be different criteria for selecting a best algorithm to solve a problem. So these criteria can be is the algorithm is easy to implement, understand and modify. How long does the algorithm takes to run to the completion and how much computer memory a particular algorithm uses. Now software engineering is primarily concerned with the first criteria which is how easy an algorithm is to understand, implement and modify. And for complexity analysis, we use the second and the third criteria. Now as I said, there are often many different algorithms which can be used to solve the same problem. Thus it makes sense to develop techniques that allows us to compare different algorithms with respect to their efficiency and we need to choose the most efficient algorithm to solve the problem. Now the efficiency of any algorithm to solve a problem is the measure of two different things. First is the time efficiency and second is the space efficiency. Now the time efficiency deals with the time that means how much time an algorithm takes to execute and space efficiency deals with the memory usage that means how much space an algorithm take. Also the evaluation of efficiency should be as machine independent as possible. It's not useful to measure how fast an algorithm runs if it depends on which particular computer or operating system or programming language or compiler or the kind of inputs are used for the testing. Instead, to evaluate the efficiency of an algorithm, we count the number of basic operations the algorithm performs and we also calculate how this number depends on the size of the input. Now what is a basic operation? So a basic operation is an operation which takes a constant amount of time to execute. Hence the efficiency of an algorithm is the number of basic operations an algorithm performs. Now let me give you some examples of basic operations. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, memory access, when you return from a function, these are all basic operations. Now what are non-basic operations? So operations like sorting of any uh, big array or searching inside number of elements inside an array can be a non-basic operation. So in this course, we are going to focus on the efficiency with respect to time. So we are going to speak about the time complexity and we are going to skip the space complexity because often we use time complexity over space complexity to find out the efficiency of an algorithm. Now the objective of time complexity analysis is to determine the feasibility of algorithm by estimating the upper bound of the amount of work performed and to compare different algorithms before deciding which algorithm is the best for solving a particular problem. Now how to calculate the running time or how to find out the time complexity. So we all know that most algorithms transforms the input objects into the output objects. So as an example, let's say we have been given an unsorted array which we want to sort with the help of an algorithm. So our input will be an unsorted array and then we apply an algorithm to sort this array and as a result we get the sorted array in this form. Now it's important to note here is that the running time of an algorithm typically grows with 
the input size now as we can see here that this input is of four elements but if you want to calculate the running time or the time complexity of an algorithm we need to give a very large input to it and evaluate how this algorithm performs when we give a very large input to the algorithm so generally we analyze running time as a function of input size so how our running time behaves when we change the input size and we increase the size of our input and to evaluate an algorithm or to compare two different algorithms we focus on their relative rate of growth with respect to the increase in the input size now as i said the running time of an algorithm varies with the inputs and typically it grows with the size of the inputs now we analyze the time in three different cases the best case the worst case and the average case so let me explain you all these cases with an example so on the right hand side you can see i have a pseudo code which contains a function which is called array max so we want to find out the maximum value inside an array so here i have declared a pseudo code for a function and the function name is array max and the input which it takes is the array itself and the number of elements the array contains so here you can see the input array a of n integers and the output which we want is is the maximum element value inside the array a and let's say we write a very simple linear algorithm to calculate or find out the maximum value inside an array so in this uh, algorithm first of all we just take or consider uh, the first value of an array which is at index 0 as the maximum value and then we iterate over the elements of an array one by one and inside the for loop we compare each and every element of the array with the current maximum value which is taken for from the first element of an array and if this value is greater than our current maximum value we are going to change the current maximum value to the new value and in the end of the function we are going to return the current maximum value using this function so the inner working of the function right now is not very important the important thing is the input which we are giving here so let's say the maximum size of an array which we can provide inside this function is 9 so let's say we can only provide the array of 9 elements inside this function then the worst case scenario in this case will be when we provide an array of 9 elements because this for loop has to iterate over all the nine elements to find out the maximum value now the best case scenario will be when we pass an array of only one element we cannot pass an array of zero element that's why our best case scenario will be an array of uh, element 1 because it's going to take the least amount of time because the for loop just have to iterate once to find out the maximum value which is the value itself and in the worst case scenario you can see because we can only provide nine elements inside the array maximum that means in this case it's going to take the most amount of time i'm just taking this input as the hypothetical case to explain you the worst case scenario so the worst case scenario is the maximum possible input you can give to an algorithm and the average case scenario will be in the middle of the best case and the worst case that means in this example an average case scenario will be an array of five elements so in this case the time taken 
by the algorithm to find out the maximum value will be in between the worst case and the best case. Now the best case running time is usually useless because in real world it will never happen that a best input will be provided for your algorithm to find out uh, the running time, right? And the average case scenario is very useful but it's often very difficult to determine. So generally we focus on the worst case scenario to calculate the running time because it's easier to analyze and it's crucial to find out the worst case running time in the applications like games or finance applications or uh, robotics. So in those cases, it's best to find out the worst case scenario. Now in the last slide, I have shown you a pseudo code to just explain you how the best case, the worst case and the average case running time scenario works. So let me explain you what is the pseudo code and why it's used. So pseudocode is a high level description of an algorithm and we use pseudocode because it's more structured than the plain English, it's less detailed than a program and it's a preferred notation for describing algorithms because it only concentrates on an algorithm and not the design issues of the program. Now let me give you some details of a pseudo code. So as I have already shown you a function using a pseudo code. So here if you want to write a function you can just write the name of the function and then in the parenthesis you can write the argument which it takes and then you write in the first two line the input which an algorithm takes and the expected output which you are expecting. Now if you want to show the control flow using the pseudocode, you can use these kind of expressions. So you can write uh, expressions like if then else, while do, repeat, until, for do. I have already shown you how you can use this for do in this uh, algorithm which we have written using this kind of pseudocode. So you can uh, just write for and then from where this value starts. So this arrow generally means the assignment. So we are assigning one to the variable i and then we want to go until the second last value of an array because an index of an array starts from zero. So that means we can only iterate up to n minus one value inside an array. And for the pseudocode, we generally use indents instead of the braces. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we will talk about the big O notation and asymptotic notations. So stay tuned and I'm going to see you in the next video.